call Halayim Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Next, double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that rule very well and teach very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. I also want to give a quick shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp here in Greenwich, South Carolina, Brother Kazak, whom I teach under. And I also want to give a quick shout out to you, Sincere Akim and Akwath, who are diligently and sincerely proving your faith in these last days with fear and trembling, all right, and who follow our testimony and believe the gospel, all right, to your salvation. To y'all, I like to say Shalom, all right. It's your brother Aliyah coming back with another quick exhortation and lesson, you know, going into deep scriptures, which, uh, believe it or not, it is needed because, especially when you're dealing with people like the Christian church who claim to believe in the Bible, yet when you even start from the first book of the Bible, the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, they don't even understand that, man. And, you know, and without too much, you know, uh, back and forth or comment on that, how about let's read it and let's understand what the scriptures are actually talking about through the spirit and power of Yahweh about Shem Yahweh All right. So without too much else to say, this is the book of Genesis, chapter one and verse one. All right. It reads, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, period. Right now, Christian, I'll read that and tell you, yeah, that's exactly what it means. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It, it's not too nothing too deep about that. But see, this is the this is the thing, right? Before we even continue, this is where you have to realize the importance of understanding language, understanding words and their origin, and not only just that, but the context and with in which how the word was used, right? So, if we actually even look at Genesis one and one, matter of fact, let me pull it up in the blue letter real quick. Genesis chapter one and verse one. You'll see that this is actually a Hebrew text that's translated or transliterated into English, right? So this word right here in the beginning, right? As it says right here, in the Hebrew, is really pronounced Baraashia in the beginning, which just means in Hebrew, it means the headings, in the headings or in the beginning, literally the first, as it says, the chief or the choice part. And what is it talking about? It's talking about in the headings, in the beginning, the first of when the heavens and the earth were made, right? So we're not talking about the beginning of time here, because if you know the scriptures, the heavenly father, Yahweh, he has no beginning of time. So we know this is not off, off bat. You're supposed to know this is not talking about the heavenly father we're talking about. As it said, let's go back. As it said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So this is the context in which we're talking about. In the Bar Asha, in the headings, the first thing that is being talked about is the, the creation of the heavens and the earth, right? Second thing it's talking about is God. Let's see who this God is, right? If we go back, Genesis 1 and 1, it says, Bar Asha, right? This next word is Bara, right? Or Bara, which just means created, creates, or creation. So in the headings, in the first, right, the, the first part, creation. That's what it says, Bara'ash. So, Bara'ashia Bara'a, right? In the beginning, creation happened, right? And who created it? It says God. God created, right? So, let's get this God in the Hebrew, right? And this Hebrew for God is actually a plural word, right? It's pronounced Allah Hayyam, right? Which Allah being singular, which, it, which just means god or power but allah ha right the allah ha the power but yum at the end makes it plural so allah ha yum the powers right the gods so if we're reading this slowly genesis 1 and 1 so far says <laughs> bara ashia bara a allah ha yum right which means what in the beginning in the headings in the first creation Allah Hayyam, the powers, right? The powers created. And what? What did they create? The heaven and the earth. Now, these powers that it's talking about is actually talking about not the heavenly father, you know, because it's plural automatically. The heavenly father is one individual being. He's him by himself, right? And it says the powers, right? The Allah Hayyam, 
created the heaven and the earth. Now, to so y'all can see this real quick. So, yeah, no, I'm not just making this up. Let's jump down real quick to Genesis 1. And I believe it is, yeah, verse 26. I'm going to highlight it real quick. All right. Check this out. We're going to go right back up. I'm not skipping anything, right? Genesis 1 and 26. And God said the same word again. Allah, I am. Let us make man in our image. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. If this is the Heavenly Father talking, why will he say us? Let us make man in our image, right? Who is he talking to? If it's, if this is just talking about Heavenly Father creating uh, everything, just the Heavenly Father now. Who is he talking to? Let us make man in our image, right? After our likeness, right? We can pause right there. I just wanted to show you real quick. It's not just talking about Genesis 1 and 1. One power created the heaven and the earth. No, the powers created the heavens and the earth, right? Those powers is talking about the heavenly son, right? The heavenly father's son and his angels, man, his ministers, his servants. They are the ones creating right here in Genesis 1 and 1. If you don't believe me, let's grab this real quick, right? Let's get John chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, in the beginning, right, which is referring to the exact same time we're reading in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God, right? Now, if we go real quick, John 1 and 1, into the blue letter. I'm not going to take up too much time on this, but real quick, just to prove that this is the son doing this, you know, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. We know that even Hamashiach, who you call Christ, said, I am the word, you know? I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also said uh, he was the word made flesh. Actually, it says that right here in verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? That's talking about the son, you know? If you, if you don't get that, you know, you're definitely not going to understand the rest of the breakdown for Genesis 1. So you might as well click off because it's so much more deeper than just this, right? But it says, and the word was with God and the word was God, right? If you click this, right? See? So, Theos right here and Theos, right? Let's see what Theos means. It says, a deity especially the supreme divinity, right? It says a god or goddess, a general name. And this is where Christianity goes off, and, and uh, which is why they don't understand the Genesis 1 and 1. Because they say that the us in the beginning was God, the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's a lie, man. <laughs> it's literally a lie. The Heavenly Father was relaxing, man. And he commanded his son and his son's servants, the angels, man, to, to create the heavens and the earth, right? Before before we even get too much deeper into this, I'm gonna grab this one one more scripture showing you that, that the son created this. And we're gonna go back to Genesis because like I said, I don't want to get too caught up on a different topic. Alright, check this out. Colossians is it four? Let me see. Hold on, select me. I think it's Colossians. Yeah, here we go, right here. Colossians chapter one. On side of verse 15 or through 17, it says, Who is the image of the invisible power, the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? So before anything else was made, the word was made. The Heavenly Father created his son, right? He was the firstborn of every creature, even before the angels, man. It says, verse 16, for by him were all things created. Let's read this one more time. Because we're talking about the firstborn of every creature. This is Yahweh Shai, right? Not the Heavenly Father. He has no beginning. So it has to be talking about the Son. Colossians 1 and 16. For by him, the Son, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Boom. So, you know, Yahushua is responsible for creating these heavens and the earth. The heaven the heaven, which really is talking about one right here, which is what we know as the sky. We're going to get into that later, later too. And the earth, the physical earth that we're here. Yahweh Shai and the angels, you know, made it, right? This is just verse one. Like I said, we don't, we don't talk about all that already within the first verse. You already know Christians don't even understand that, let alone the rest of the chapter. But as I digress, let's keep going, right? Genesis chapter one and verse two. All right. And it says, and... The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So now, since we know that this God is not talking about just the heavenly father, I'm going to actually replace it with the true name, the Allah or I'm going to say the powers. OK, so I'll read it again. And the earth was without form. What does that mean? <laughs> what does this mean, y'all? And the earth was without form and void. Right. Is what it basically is saying is that the earth being void is basically before the earth physically was manifested as a solid object for you to walk on, you know, build things upon. It was there. The earth was there, but it was without form and void, which means what? It's referring to the elemental stage that it was in before the elements were brought together and created what you see as solid ground, solid earth, right? If you don't understand that yet, just bear with me. I'll paint a better picture as we continue, right? It says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep right what is the deep <laughs> like i said the earth was there even the heaven was there but they were in an elemental stage right and it says and the spirit of the powers moved upon the face of the waters now i want to grab this real quick because genesis 1 and 2 a lot of people will read and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters and the first thing they think about is aquafina or or fiji you know or or depending on your budget uh, great value drinking water. You know, that's that's the first thing that pops into their head. Oh, the, the, the waters. It's an ocean. No, <laughs> you can't be simple with with reading the Bible in English and then juxtaposing your own understanding of words into what the text is saying. Right. The face of the waters is not talking about drinking water. It's not talking about Fiji and Aquafina. You know, it's talking about the elements. You know, let me get this word in the Hebrew real quick. Genesis 1 and verse 2. Okay, so going down, check it. Right? When you click it, this word right here in the Hebrew is mayum. Mayum, right? Which, when you look at it, like I said, the Strong's, I mean, yeah, the blue letter bible does go off sometimes here it just says it's just waters it's just waters which is what the bible is saying it is waters the elements in their most purest rawest form are 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 in, in like a liquid state but this is the thing it's not h2o and we're going to get into this at the same time all of the elements are not one thing for example let me slow down and let me break it to you like this right Genesis 1 and 2 says again, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That deep matter is literally exactly what I said. It's matter. Right. And what makes up matter? Atoms. Right. If you look up in today, if you've ever went to school or you graduated or you did your own research, you know that there are 94 different types of atoms in nature. Literally 94 different types of atoms, right? <laughs> Which if you don't know, atoms literally make up every single thing that's around you. You can't see atoms, but you can see atoms. You, if you're holding a bottle, if you're sitting on a chair, if you're watching this on your phone, uh, uh, on your TV, you know, if you drove your car, all those things are made up of atoms, all different types of atoms that have their own operations, different jobs and things, but they work together cohesively, right? But different atoms combined differently makes up different states of matter what is matter matter is something that has mass and that takes up space literally that is the definition of matter so atoms combined together makes up different types of matter and the four most common states of matter are known as solids liquids gases and plasma these are the four most common types of matter right like I said, I'm going to say one more time, solids, liquids, gas, and plasma. So what we're seeing right here, this this deep is literally atoms in their purest, rawest form that when the Lord, as we keep reading, he's going to command his angels to literally manipulate and adjust and control the matter, right, to make elements. <laughs> literally, he's going to take these certain matter matters. And he's going to make elements out of them, right? So when we read waters right here, it's not talking about one element. Or really, if we're going to be really technical, water, drinking water, is made up of two different types of elements. It's made up of two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen mo molecule, right? When, when you add them together, 
together, it literally makes H2O water, what we call drinking water or oceans or seas, right? That is a combination or manipulation of matter, which became elements fused together that made a physical, a physical, tangible thing, right? It wasn't the same thing as it was before you added the two hydrogen and, two, and one oxygen, but it was still water before they were joined together, if that makes sense. The water always existed, but the, the molecules had to be brought together to fully manifest the real deal physical thing, right? That's what we're reading in Genesis 1 and 2 about the earth. The earth has existed in its purest, rawest forms as Adam, but it was without form and void before Yahweh Shai and the angels came together and brought them brought it together, made it manifest, right? Let's keep reading. Genesis 1 and 3. And the powers, or an Allahim said, let there be light, and there was light. So this is something you also gotta understand, right? What changes the states of matter is heat, right? And you can look at it, it's called a phase change, right? Which is when you change you take a solid, you turn it into a liquid, or you take that liquid, or for, let me slow down real quick. Heat is what causes the phase change, right? So let's say we had a block of ice and you heat that block of ice up and it melts, it's gonna become water. What we know as a, a liquid, let me say that. Cause it, it was, as an ice block, it was still water, but it was a solid, right? You heat up that solid ice, it's gonna, it's gonna become a liquid, right? Same element, different states of matter, right? You heat up that, that liquid, it's gonna become what? A gas, right? You, you take that gas and you heat it up even more, it's gonna become plasma, right? And the thing about plasma is that it plasma is basically a gas, but in a heightened state. It is much more flammable, or it, it can conduct a lot more electricity than a cloud would, or, or a gas would, right? Which a, gases do conduct certain electricity sometimes, but plasma is what comes out of that gas. It's not the gas that creates lightning. It's plasma that makes up lightning, right? I don't want to get ahead of myself because I know the technical understandings, but what we, what we just read in Genesis 1 and 3 is the power said, let there be light, and there was light. This is not the creation of the sun. <laughs> this is what I want you guys to understand real quick. When they said, let there be light, and there was light, that is not the sun that was made. We're going to read later on down when the sun was made. But right now, they did not create the sun. What they did was they heated up, you know, through the spirit of y'all can receive this, man. It's simple, you know, science, but it's through the spirit to understand, you know, the origin and how things actually work according to the heavenly powers. You know, the Lord allowed his ministers to literally activate or jumpstart certain electromagnetic responses in these elements. And the elements literally started to glow, started to shine, literally right it said let there be light and there was light how i said look activate them the angels went over there and activated them and look boom they started to shine right verse 4 says and the power saw the light that it was good and the powers divided the light from the darkness so so far the earth is not made uh the firmament the sky is not made the stars aren't made all we know is that the lord told Yahusha to tell the angels to activate certain elements and cause them to glow and when that did a certain part of the elements were shining and a certain part of the elements were not. So the ones that were shining, they called day and the ones that were not shining, they called night. All right. And it says in the evening and the morning were the first day. So, so far on day one, all that has been created <laughs> is light, right? <laughs> let's, let's understand that. It's not the sun. It's not even the moon. It's not the stars, man. Just certain elements caused through that chemical reaction of heat, man, through the power of the heavenly father through the angels man they were activated and started to shine all right verse six it says and the power said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters right so before we keep going i also want to see yeah i wanted to do this real quick too because i want to so like i wanted to throw the periodic table up on the screen for you i'm gonna do that right now because the periodic table is actually where, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the 118 different types of elements that are in nature, you know? And, I mean, not 118 elements. There's 118 different atoms in nature, but the periodic table shows the, the actual elements that they have the technical names for. Like, for example, even in the human body on this chart, 
the human body is made up of uh, phosphorus, calcium, nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, right? Even sodium, which if you don't understand about the even sodium, look, when you, let's say you're working out, you exercise, you start to sweat, or let's say you, you're out in the sun, you start getting hot and you start to sweat. If, if your sweat has ever gone into your mouth and you tasted it and it tasted salty, it's because of the sodium that's in your sweat. Sodium is what makes up salt. It's what gives salt its savor. You know, also, if you don't even uh, wipe the sweat off your head and you let it dry and like a few moments later, you go to rub your head and it's all dry and feels like crumbs. That's that sodium, man. That's literally what makes up salt. Like I explained. So it's, it's not it shouldn't be hard for you guys to see that these elements literally, whether you acknowledge them or not, whether you acknowledge them or not, they're a part of nature. They're a part of life. Right. This is how the Lord creates things, you know, through the elements. Right. So I wanted to make sure that was clear real quick, because this next part is also an add on or an addition to what we've already read. Right. Because I mentioned earlier, the deep waters is the elements in their purest, rawest form. But that's also what scientists call space. Like right now, before we continue reading Genesis uh, chapter six right i mean chapter one and verse six before we keep reading that you gotta understand that i meant to mention that that deep darkness that the bible's talking about that's what scientists call space or the atmosphere right everywhere in there is it's literally elements in the purest rawest forms that the lord is still gonna you know do whatever he wants with uh, any uh, hey look he as we keep reading we're gonna it's gonna tell you what he's gonna do with them you know and they still are there to this very day if you look out your window or wherever you are man you can see what we're gonna read it's literally still here in reality all right so continuing on i had to make sure that was clear real quick genesis 1 and verse 6 and the power said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters right now this firmament that it goes back to the word uh don't or uh, arch, right? Which is basically a, a solid, so like it's a solid barrier within our atmosphere that the Lord created to divide the first heaven from the second heaven, right? Which the first heaven is this firmament. It's literally gonna tell you, matter of fact, I'll go ahead and read it, verse seven. And the powers made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So when the Lord created this separation, this division, he separated the elements that were underneath the firmament to be something for something else and the elements that were above the firmament to be for something else, right? And verse 8, and the powers called the firmament heaven. So this firmament that he made, this is the first heaven. This is the, the heaven where it's the barrier between where the birds are later going to be able to fly as we as we continue to read and the, the levels above the heavens, which we are not be, not able to pass through. You know, we can't get to that side. You know, the Lord has it divided off you know but this first heaven i mean yeah the first heaven which is called the firmament science scientists and the world calls it the ozone layer today you know they used to call it the sky you know we still call it the firmament but it, today in east Lost terminology they call it the ozone layer the layer where nothing can get through it's just this barrier of of things that and and truly esau he's been trying to get through it that's why you have things like project uh fishbowl and uh other projects where they they've literally you can even see today esau's trying to tell you we're destroying the ozone layer we're destroying it we're destroying oh uh, yeah because he's doing it on purpose he's trying to get through the barrier that the heavenly father made but he can't do it you know the lord literally has that division made so no one can pass through except for the heavenly father's uh son and his angels you know and the elect when he wants to you know being them up and out whenever he feels like it <laughs> so uh continuing on uh, so yeah, if it wasn't clear, the firmament of heaven is also known as the ozone layer today. You know, all right, verse nine. Uh, and the powers said, let there be, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Okay, so hold on. I just, I checked my notes real quick. I wanted to also mention in verse five, jump back up real quick. Uh, Genesis one and five, when it says, and the powers called the light day and the darkness he called night in the evening and the morning were the first day that separation between the time of light which is day and the time of darkness which is called night that that's li literally the that transition period or that transition moment is where also where you get the terms twilight zone or it's dawn 
or it's dusk. And it's basically those terms are the words used for the time in between when it's daytime and when it's nighttime. It's, that's what it's called in, in between that transition. Because believe it or not, uh, we're, as we're going to read, the earth is going to be made within where the light shines and where it doesn't shine. The earth is going to be formed within that circuit. So truly, when we keep reading, you're going to see that uh, the sun is not the reason. It, it, like I explained earlier, the sun is not the reason the earth shines. As we read earlier, the Lord, when he created the uh, light, he, he caused certain elements to shine on their own, to have their own aura, their own glow, right? And it, it didn't even just happen overnight. Matter of fact, I got to get this real quick uh, to prove how long it actually took because I'm not saying it was like a, a flip of the, uh, like a snap of the fingers either, man. The Lord literally was so intricate and so detailed with what he wanted to do and, and how complicated it was. It took, it took some time. All right, this is 2 Peter chapter 3, and I'm going to read just verses 5 through 9 real quick. Get straight to the point. It says, For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of Yahweh, right? Who was the word of Yahweh? Yahweh Shai, right? That by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So Yahweh Shai is the reason the heavens of old were made and the earth was made. That's what we just read in Genesis. Verse 6. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, right? As, we, as we're going to understand, you know, that's why. Actually, I'm going to throw that picture up here too real quick. Because I, I got a picture of uh, earth, basically, t in today's time. Or more so recently. They show kind of like the continents kind of like drifted apart and separated right well we're going to go back and read in genesis when the lord causes the dry land to form he forms one piece of land he doesn't actually like have it pop up randomly no originally it, it was one one body of earth so-called you know and we're going to read it right let me let me keep going real quick verse seven but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day right so one day said the heavenly father is a thousand of our years so when we go back to genesis right right when we go back to genesis and we read that verse five and the Allah called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. It took Yahweh Shai and the angels a thousand years just to activate certain elements to glow <gasps> and to, you know, leave the other ones to uh, be a perfect darkness. Right. And that's why I said it was good, man. They, they seen the, the fruits of their labor and it was exactly how Yahweh wanted it, you know, so. Going back, because I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything for you guys or it'd be confusing. So going back to verse seven, I mean, verse seven. All right. And it says, and Allah made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so. And Yahweh called an Allah called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. So this took another two, another thousand years. So two thousand years total so far. Uh, another thousand years just to create the ozone layer, right? This thick barrier that is literally impenetrable, you know, for for us, you know, not for the powers because they made it, you know, but it's literally impenetrable for the creatures of the earth, man, you know? And also, that's why I wanted to get back. All right, verse 9. Check it. It says, And Allah said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so right so when the lord commanded the angels to gather the elements together that's what it says let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place they gathered certain elements together and fused them and what happens is when these certain elements fuse they they cool down and they actually froze right and this is where you get certain parts of the earth today where it's not earth it's actually ice you know, this is where you'll see. And I'm going to throw, like I said, I'm going to throw the picture of the earth up here. And, you know, but as you see, look, ice, right? But then it also says what? And, right, continue on in verse 9. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. So this is where you get the physical 
earth from, right? The physical field, the plane, the grass, you know? We're going to read about that next, but I'm showing you the separation between the two, man. First, the, the angels, they gather certain elements together and it froze. And also, the dry land appeared within it as well, man, you know? And this image that I'm throwing up, it's, it's not a, a perfect depiction. I'm not even saying this is 100,000% accurate, but this is what we have to go off of today, you know, which is a good enough uh, example for you to kind of picture in your head what it looks like. Now, these sides of the picture, they're really supposed to connect, you know, because according to the scriptures, the Lord says the face of the earth is a circle, you know, so it's really supposed to connect Esau being the damn devil that he is. Of course, he's not going to put the true depiction of the earth according to the scriptures. But hey, look, we got to do what we can. Just know the ice is really, it really connects, man. When the scriptures said, let them be gathered unto one place, the Lord meant that. He didn't just say, throw some ice over here, throw some ice over there and then call it a day. No, it was one place and it froze and the dry land appeared also. And that was in one place, you know repeat that right said so in verse 10 and Allah called the dry land earth and the and the gathering together of the waters called he seas and Allah saw that it was good so they're also a gathering of elements that when they fuse them together it became h2o and the Lord called that seas so you got one part of ice right you got one part earth and another part of the seas right which is literally water like that is literally water the seas the oceans you know we know that's made up of water whether it be salt water whether it be you know uh i forget the other type of water um it's salt water and fresh water yeah that's what it is salt water and fresh water but it's still water at the end of the day that's actual water you know still proven go to a beach you know go sail the seas and you're gonna be literally in water <laughs> it's that simple all right and let's continue I don't think I wanted to get anything else. Actually, yeah, I did. Let me prove to you real quick that that the earth was once together. But uh, due to the flood that we read in 2 Peter, the flood actually uh, changed the, the face of the earth, right? It says Genesis 7 and 10. It says, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth, right? So the, the seas were no longer just around the earth. The seas were actually in the waters were upon the earth and not only just that it says in verse 11 in the 600th year of noah's life in the second month the seventh day of the month the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open so the firmament that the lord made he caused that to open and he allowed literally like waters actual waters to come out of his uh, elements that he made to literally destroy the face of the earth. He also caused the elements from underneath the earth to be broken up and they shot up water as well. And then the seas that were around the earth came up or on top of the earth as well. So think about all that water pressure. As it says, even the earth being broken up from beneath, that's going to obviously separate and disconfigure how the earth looks right now, you know, let alone when the waters recede back down and how that's going to cause the, you know, the, the earth to spread out or uh, slowly drift, as they like to say in the world, the continental drift, whatever you want to call it. It's actually biblical. You know, the, the, the earth was in one place, according to the scriptures. But due to the flood, the Lord broke the earth up. All right. Let me go back to Genesis 1. All right. And Lord willing, this is edifying. All right. Continuing on. Uh, where we leave off at? All right. I'm going to pick back up at verse 11. Right, and it says Genesis 1 11. And Al Hayyim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So, don't we have that today? Look, look outside, there's green grass on this dry land. You know, you got trees, fruit trees, you got apple trees bringing forth apples, you got orange trees bringing forth oranges, whose seed is in itself of his kind. So, you're, you're not going to see no orange tree bringing forth grapes or you no know, grape vine bringing forth uh watermelons you're not gonna see those things man because the lord said the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself right so that answers the question for the world by the way before you can continue like they like to say who can't what came first the chicken or the egg nigga the fucking chicken according to the lord who the seed is in itself you know that's the perfect work that the lord made from the beginning but guess what christians don't know that because they don't understand how to break down the Bible. They don't have the Holy Spirit, you know? Let's keep going. Verse 12. 
and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and Elohim saw that it was good right that's exactly how the lord wanted it to be made right so hey for for the uh, alphabet community if, if the lord made the seeds and the trees and the grass you know and when he made them they were fine with how they were made they didn't want to trans their genders what makes you and we're gonna read guess what we're gonna read the creation of uh adam kind as well and guess what <laughs> it was good. it's gonna be good they didn't want to trans their genders either hey i just want to throw it out let's keep going now uh genesis 1 and 13 and the evening and the morning were the third day right so it took another thousand years just for the lord to bring vegetation to the earth literally just another thousand years to add vegetation to this dry land right called the earth all right it says in verse 14 and Elohim said let there be lights now hold on now we're finally getting some actual light so it's been three thousand years before any stars any suns any moons have been created but guess what there were still sun i mean it's like there was still light enough for vegetation to grow come on y'all think about this because esau today will tell you the sun is the source of all life without the sun life will cease to exist well hold on nigga well it's according to the bible three thousand years uh life was being made explain that esau oh wait you don't believe in god so you can't okay let's keep let's keep going all right it says verse 14 and Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Right. So the lights in the firmament of heaven are literally up there to show you signs for what seasons are about to come, what seasons you're in, for what day that's about to come and what days you're in and for the year that's about to come and for the year that you are in. That's why the lights were created. Right. Let's keep going to so verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So the lights, they also shine upon the earth. How do we know that's true? Because we can see the lights from here. If they didn't give light upon the earth, you would not be able to see the lights that are up in the firmament. You know, it should be common knowledge, right? It should be easily understood. Now, this is the point about the sun and the moon that people skip over or they, they don't understand. Right? Verse 16. And Allah made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So what is the greater light and what is the lesser light? If thou canst tell, I'm going to tell you. The greater light is the sun and the lesser light is the moon. The greater light was made to rule the day, not to give daylight. Let's make this clear because <laughs> I'm telling you, all there's a lot of people that are walking around here thinking that the sun is what lights the earth. No. For a whole 3,000 years prior, the sun didn't light the earth. The earth was lit up by the aura of the elements around the earth. Literally, I'm going to throw this picture up on the screen too. Esau shows you this when they go up into the, not out the ozone there because they've never done that, you know, but when they go up into the into the heavens where the birds fly, if they go up high enough, they show on their, their uh, recordings and their, uh, their, what do they call the places where they view the stars? I, I forget what they call it. The astrology labs, whatever, that's what we're going to call it today, damn it. The astrology labs, when they look, they actually show you the aura of the earth that's glowing. Look at the picture. They, I mean, this is just a random picture that you can, you can find, but it's true. The elements around the earth are, are glowing within them own cells, within, within their own cells, man. Through the spirit power of your house, you know what I'm saying? And then the sun was literally created to show you, look, I'm ruling the daytime. I'm the power of the daytime. When you see me... It's, it's daytime, you know, but the moon was created in it in its perfect glory to rule the nighttime. And no, the sun does not lighten the moon. It said a great light, which is the sun and a lesser light. The moon is still a light. It just doesn't have a great glory as the sun does, but it does still have its own glory. Matter of fact, the moon has its own magnetic pull to it, man. That's why I was watching uh, the Elder Apostle Tahara's video. He even went into the turn that they used to. Uh, say a lot it's not really used too much now but there's a term called lunatic right which the magnetic pools had effects on people's minds during certain times of its shining to where it, it literally made people go crazy you know going to the 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 word for moon which is luna right which is where you get the word lunar from which is going back to the moon right which means light you know you know the word for moon uh in the hebrew means month like like we read earlier the the lights in the sky were created for 
uh, days, seasons, and years, right? The word moon in Hebrew goes back to month. That's how we determine the times of the month. But also, like I'm saying, look, the word lunatic, the moon has its own power, man. You know, it's not maybe not may not be as great to some of y'all with an understanding of the sun, but it, the Lord made it for a reason, you know. Anyways, let's digress. All right. Verse 17, it says, and Allah set them in the ferment of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Once again, we can see it from the earth. We can see that they are still shining, you know. It's not that hard to understand, you know. Verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And yeah, Allah saw that it was good, right? So they're doing their jobs, man. When the Lord put them up into the sky, they were they were in their orbit or they were they were in their system the way the Lord wanted them to wanted it to be. And even to this day, the sun and the moon are still literally floating up there in the heavens doing their thing, man. Doing their thing, right? Oh, and it also shows a cut to a Scientology, which teaches that the Earth orbits the sun. Nigga, no, man. According to the Bible, the sun and the moon were made for the Earth, not the Earth is made uh, just to coexist with the sun. Nigga, no. The Earth was there 2,000 years before the um, the sun and the moon were ever made, you know? 2,000 years. Let, let's Y'all got to think about that time, man, that time difference. It paints a much broader picture of the creation story because when you understand how long things took and actually what was being done every thousand years, you see that your your original understanding of how the earth and, and the ordinances that the Lord made works, they're, they were completely off. You were bugged out due to Esau's schools, you know? <laughs> but Esau did have some things right. He he, he mentioned Adams. He, he mentioned... Uh, matter right he mentioned elements right he mentioned all those things but not within their proper you know the proper explanation they just say it was a big fucking bang man and that's where they all came from bro no they always existed it's just the heavenly father didn't send his son yet to activate certain elements and bring them together to create things like the sun the earth the ice you know the 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 storm the the, the floods i mean you know he he, he did all that man just because he could you know everything was already made available because he made them but he didn't activate them to their fullest extent you know and it's going to be even more you know when when the children of israel get delivered and receive salvation in his last days they're going to be back connected on that angelic level like we read earlier in verse 26 they're about to read again let us make man in our image the elect are going to be made back in the image of the angels where we get to manipulate the elements again you know we we actually get to do it you know how shy was already examples of that walking on water you know healing people that was him literally adjusting their atoms literally changing the matter around them that fixing the elements within them taking the impurities out he was doing that with his hands and through prayer through the spirit power of his father man we're gonna get that that blessing back you know let me let me i'm getting a little excited y'all okay let me stay focused all right so where do i leave off all right verse 19 and it says in the evening and the morning were the fourth day so that's another four thousand year right verse 20 and allah said let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life right this is when everything that moves uh literally within the earth was made including human beings if you don't believe me let's get it genesis 1 and 20 and the blue letter all right 120 and let's see what this word uh moving creature means right moving creature right let's see uh i believe this it might be the next word i'm looking for said a right uh which is really like shot shot a and 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 not yeah shot i something something like that so i can y'all i forgot that hebrew word but uh let me see it says of insects animals small reptiles quadrupeds no, this wasn't exactly what I'm looking for. I think it's, uh, where's 20 again? I think it's that hath life. Let me see. No. I don't think that's it either. Uh, this is a, 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 yeah, I mean, this is a good enough one, right? If you look at the strongest definition, it says alive, hence. It says raw, flesh, plant, water, whatever, strong, uh, life age alive appetite don't we have appetites right it says beast company congregation lively living creature a thing maintenance old quick raw running springing troop uh this isn't even exactly what i was looking for either but 
that might be the next verse. Let me so let me see. All right, so I'm gonna read the verse again. Genesis 1 and 20. And Alhaim said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Right? Oh, this is this is the next verse. Like it. It's the next verse. So I mean, it's still it's talking about the creation of uh so-called humans at the same times, but verse 21 is really the main point where I can show you guys that. All right, it says verse 21. And Allah created great whales and every living creature that move it. Every living creature that move it. Don't we move? Don't aren't we alive? That that includes cockroaches, that includes beetles, that includes the fox, that includes the lion, the 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 stock, the the pig, everything, every living creature that moves was made literally after the fourth day. Literally, every single creature, right? It says, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, right? And the waters goes back to them elements, man. Literally, like I explained earlier, the human body within itself is made up of several different elements. Phosphorus, calcium, nitrogen, hydrogen, uh, potassium, iron, copper, oxygen, sodium. You know, all these things make up just the human body. But literally, the elements were, were literally formed together to create us after our kind. So he made... Uh, so-called mankind that he made the great whales he made the lions he made the elephants he, after their kind man you will never see a pig that came from a chicken and the lord was like yeah that's what i wanted nigga no he said he made all those things but after their kind right and it says and and every winged fowl after his kind so the, the look you got eagles you got hawks you got vultures you got bats you know, it's different kinds of winged fowls, right? But they're all after their kind, you know? And Allahim saw that it was good, right? Verse 22. And Allahim blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So it took a whole thousand years for the Lord Yahweh Shai to make every individual animal that ever existed. That might be extinct now, but he's going to bring right back in our kingdom. You know, every single creature that existed was made within a thousand years. One thousand years. And that's not a little bit of time, but at the same time, that's a lot of damn animals. I can tell you all that, you know. But you saw, you know, of course, you don't kill a good 80 percent of the fucking animals. <laughs> Which is fucking sad, but it's Esau, man, I'll tell you. All right, it says, verse 24. And all I am said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so, that's talking about us too, look. Even the cattle, the creeping things that creep upon the earth, like I said, the cockroaches, the snakes, you know, the, uh, let me think, the badgers, you know, the, the, the fucking possums, you know, any, all the things that creep upon the earth, the beasts of the earth, earth, the Lord made them, you know, in verse 25. And Allah made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Now Allah saw it was good, right? Verse 26. Now Allah said, let us make man in our image. So man already existed. Now they wanted us to make now it was said they wanted to make man after their image which what is the image of yahweh shiny angels order you know the lord yahweh shiny angels wanted to make man after their image they wanted to get them order animals these creatures these flying fowls they don't have order they have instinct they, they go off their natural instinct right which in that time the the instinct of the animals was fear and dread from from the uh mankind you know, in that, in that day and in that time. But we know later on after the flood, the Lord took that fear and dread off the animals. And that's why now you can be fucking mauled by a bear, attacked by a lion, bitten by a snake, you know, trampled by an elephant, you know, <laughs> stung by a bee. It's because guess what? The Lord took that fear and that dread off of man, you know. And, but the Lord said that that fear and that dread is going to be given back to man, but to the Lord's people. You know, they're going to they're going to respect us in our kingdom. That's why our kids are even going to be able to play again with that young adder, you know, as the as there's prophecies say, you know, 
you know, but I don't want to go too far into that. Just as you understand, man, the Lord, he, look, he made them all. And he says, verse 28 again, we're going to read uh, 26 again. And Allah said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, right? Give him order. And not only that, it says what? And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, right? So boom. And, and that happened, right? Not only when the Lord made Adam kind, not going to get too deep into this, but when the Lord made Adam kind, he chose Adam to rule over Adam kind in, in the garden, you know? So guess what? That's what that's what that was. He gave man dominion, right? And, he, and they told us with that dominion came our understanding for Adam how to rule. These are certain animals you can and can't eat, you know? These are certain things that you can and can't do, you know? Adam understood these things, you know? That's that order that was given to him. That's that likeness that was given from the heavens. You know, it says in verse 27. So Allah Hayyim created man in his own image. In the image of, of the Allah Hayyim created he him. Male and female created he them. Right? And Allah Hayyim blessed them. And Allah Hayyim said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Right? Like I said. Verse 29, and Allah said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. All right, so at that time, look, we was even eating the, the trees with the fruits of the tree for our food, for our meat, you know? And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. So even the animals were eating green herbs, right? All the animals, right? Even the lions, right? Lions, tigers, and bears. What? No. Oh my! Because guess what? They was eating the the green herbs. You know. It says verse thirty one. And Al Haim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So it took six thousand years for the Lord literally to go to this deep of elements, you know, which was atoms. He said those atoms and formed matter, and out of that matter he formed elements, the solid, liquid, the gases, and the plasma, and through those he illuminated certain elements to make the light. He took some of the other ones to make a ferment. He took some of the other ones to bring uh, ice, and then earth, and then the seas. Then he took more and brought vegetation upon the earth. Then he took more, more matter and elements to make living creatures and all the 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 sun moon the stars the lights and the front look it took six thousand years for the lord to do all that and he said each thousand year it was good and after the six thousand year what happened you'd have to read genesis chapter two in order to get that understanding you know but with that i hope this lesson and exhortation was edifying to the sincere hopeful elect in his last days right and see y'all i'll let it say shalom oh, yeah, Psalm 24 The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Rock that you have a shot. Rock that you have a shot. Rock that you have a shot.